So I'm placing my hands on my heart, taking in that deep breath of love and gratitude. So grateful for this time to come together to be the two or more who are gathered in the name and nature of love. Grateful for all of the ahas and insights, deep authentic sharing and healing that is going to happen during this conversation and will continue to happen as we go through our days. Grateful for the opportunity to come together to talk about our experiences in reading and living A Course in Miracles and for these beautiful teachings of Jesus. Grateful for all of our earthly and heavenly helpers and teachers. We ask that they join and surround and support us now during this call and as we go through our days. And we're grateful that we get to share the benefits of our own healing and expansion with everyone because we're one with them. In grace and gratitude, we let it be. And so it is. Amen. So beautiful, Linda. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So this was a um, short and deep. I don't know how anybody else experienced it, but wow. <laughs> Just two pages, not even, of wow. <laughs> Would anybody like to begin our sharing? Um, this is Deborah, and I'll start out. All right, thank you. Um, so first of all, if anybody can give an, one thing I didn't really, I don't think I fully grasp yet is that concept of an idol. So, I mean, I know traditionally what that word means, but if somebody could give me their own kind of example of that, it would be helpful to me. And the other thing I wanted to share was uh, last night I had this experience. I don't know how to describe it. It sounds a little crazy, but I was reading the lesson and um, then I just had this sense. I mean, it was like my thought was being, my thinking was being dismantled, almost like somebody was in there tinkering with it. I, you know, I don't know how to say it, it wasn't a physical experience. It was just a, an emotional kind of feeling. But I mean, have you ever heard of anything like that before? Yeah, I think I've experienced that too. It's not like um, you can sense any, anything tangible as a shift that you can yeah. see on the outside, but it is, it's like, <laughs> like somebody's tinkering with your brain and, and you yeah, I'm kind of vulnerable anyway. So it made me like, Oh, wow, well, <laughs> maybe I really <laughs> pushed this too far. So anyway, um, I'm glad you've experienced that uh, the shift, the word shift really describes it, I believe. Yes. Yes. And what do you, what, what do you think the significance of that is Linda? I think it signifies, at least for me, it signifies my willingness um, to actually have a healing, believe I can have a healing, be willing to have a healing. Um, and it also signifies for me a deeper trust that um, everything is truly helpful and um, and just a knowing that that everything is unfolding exactly as it should, um, even if it doesn't feel comfortable to me all the time. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a trust. And as, as far as the idols go, um, I've sensed um, being able to make an idol of so many things. Um, my, body, my finances, um, my family. Even an illness. Exactly. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Be and, you know, even an idol of, of a story that I've told over and over again, even if it feels like it's so true that I, you know, that I have this thought in my mind that this is a fact this is true and really it's just a story that I'm telling myself over and over and over again and that's what makes it feel like it's true but it really is not true what is really true is that every single stinking thing is here to help me and 
um, everything is unfolding perfectly exactly as it should and trusting that. Does that help? Yeah, that helps a lot. Thank you. You're welcome, Deborah. Carla, go ahead. Yeah, you tell yourself over and over, it makes it, makes it seem to it. This is what was shown to me, that we are real. So when we give our belief to whatever that is, a thing, an idea, when we give our belief to it, we're giving our power to it. And we're making it seem real because we are real. The real, the true essence of us is real. So anything we believe, that's why thought and belief creates a power so um, incredible can move mountains or what something. That's that's what was shown to me. Belief is the is so important. And so, okay. So I was gonna also state about what I'd like from this, this statement that reading. It's the first line. <laughs> the first line. Do not do you not understand that to oppose the Holy Spirit is to Fight yourself. And it's, I thought for a long time, I'm like, oh, spirit this, spirit that, but it's me. It's, it's telling me, my higher self, it's telling me the Carla self, the form <laughs> in this world who makes the decisions. And so, I don't know, that was that statement really hit me because it's like any time I think I don't like something or I don't I don't want something to be the way it is, it's it's fighting myself because remember I don't know if i I'm sure I've shared it here, I'm sure, about the hose story that if you're washing your car with the hose, the water coming out of the hose, and the, the hose is pointed directly at the car, and you think the first thing the water washes is the car. No, it's washing the hose. We are the hose. That's why everything, every upset we focus on, energize, is actually fighting ourselves. It's affecting ourselves first. So, yeah. There. Yeah, thank you, Carla. Yeah, I highlighted almost that entire first paragraph because it felt like, whoa, yes, exactly. And what I wrote next to it is soul contract. And to me, my soul contract is something that I wrote like as an agreement of what I was willing to do when I came into this incarnation and um, you know, like Carla said, if I'm, if I'm arguing about it, then I'm really just having a battle with myself. <laughs> and you know, it can seem silly and insignificant, but I truly feel in my heart that every argument that I have with myself is a form of terrorism. And so every time I'm having that argument, I am contributing to the collective consciousness, to the collective mind, that energy of terrorism and bringing it forth into the world. So I really don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, when I see acts of terrorism on the news, I'm like, oh, Lord, what did I do this time? You know, what did I do this time? Um, you know, and immediately go into the whole Pono Pono prayer. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Um, but I, I have this, this knowing within me that my contribution to that was any area where I am not being loving to myself. 
it's my own form of terrorism. Yeah. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to share from this? Leslie. Well, I don't know if I want to share anything exactly yet, but I just want to say, Corinne, your hair looks very nice. Good job on the haircut. Can you hear me? And Robin, you look like you had a haircut too, which looks very nice. <laughs> Actually, and I don't know, I maybe I need to reread this whole section again because I only highlighted like two, like the very second sentence um actually paragraph three section four sentence four just that your will is boundless and then towards the end and now is god forgiven for you chose to look upon your brother as a friend and i just like that sentence because it just helps you so much to remember that in everybody you can see God. So if you're mad at somebody, it's like, really? Why are you mad at God today? <laughs> it just sort of lightens it up for me. You know, it's like, how, how, how can I be so irritated with this person when I know God is this person? So I like that, to look at your brother as a friend, if you choose. And I thought we were doing two and three, so I wrote a whole lot about idols, but I will wait for next week if we end up doing it. <laughs> We can totally talk about the idols too, because I read that, I read part of that too. Post, we were really supposed to read Freedom of Will, but I thought we had mentioned in last week's class that we were doing too, so go for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll wait. I'll let and see if anybody else wants to talk about Okay. Because I want to get something out of it. Okay. Go ahead, Corrine. Yeah, just to add, add to everything that was said already. That last sentence that she read is also the same thing in the last sentence, more or less on the first paragraph, which I highlighted. And I didn't really quite, it didn't really quite sit very, very well with me until I listened to all of you share from the beginning about the, the symptoms of separation. So God is no enemy to you. He asks no more than that he hears you call him friend. So to me, that is the answer. Yeah. To, and, and, and then the Course in Miracles says the only problem we have is that we feel that we're separated from God. So coming together is the solution. But this is even more intimate that he asks that you call him friend, you know, that God is my friend, you know. He's with me, yes, he's part of me, I'm part of him and whatever, but he's my friend. So that the thoughts that I have that are not congruent with that, I'm fighting myself, yeah. Yeah, so that's why Jennifer always said to the judge, always feels judged. So we know that whenever we're speaking anything that is not of God, then we are separated. And just to call on the Holy Spirit who has the answers on how to bring us back together. So thank you. Thank you, Corinne. Anybody else? Well, I highlighted like almost this entire thing, like I said earlier. Um, I did highlight that last sentence and a couple sentences before it too, um, where he says in paragraph five, and no one walks upon the earth, but must depend on your decision that he learned death has no power over you, over him, because he shares your freedom as he shares your will, it is your will to heal him. And because you have decided with him, he is healed. And I feel like that is, that is um, when we have healed the separation, when we have healed the thought that we can be separate from God, that we're absolutely healed and everybody else gets to be healed too can't be any other way so get to healing will you <laughs> yeah and i also highlighted uh, paragraph three 
um, felt very powerful me. And actually the last two sentences of paragraph two into paragraph three, um, God would not have his son made prisoner to what he does not want. He joins with you in willing you be free. And to oppose him is to make a choice against yourself and choose that you be bound. Look once again upon your enemy, which is me, the one you choose to hate instead of love, which is me. Thus was hatred born into the world and thus the rule of fear established there. Now hear God speak to you through him who wishes, or through him who is his voice and yours as well, reminding you that it is not your will to hate and be a prisoner to fear, a slave to death, a little creature with a little life. Your will is boundless. It is not your will that it be bound. What lies in you has joined with God himself in all creation's birth. Um, and I guess this is super powerful for me right now because I'm, um, I'm working my mind around having a conversation with my mom and my sister about stepping away from caring, doing her care. Uh, because I'm, I'm just feeling like this body is kind of spent on the caregiving thing, you know, after doing it for 10 years with Rudy, um, and what really helped me, um, when I read this section, I got this image that I had, I think it's even a photograph of my grandmother the Christmas before she passed away, she passed away on um, Good Friday in 1980. So this would have been Christmas of 1979. And she always did everything for our Christmas Eve celebration. I mean, she had a little help from her daughters, but the majority of the work she did herself. And it's this image of her sitting on the floor in the hallway of her house completely exhausted, completely exhausted. And I just thought, yeah, that's going to be me. If I don't find my voice and step up and say, I just can't do this anymore right now. Uh, this body needs a break, <laughs> you know? Um, so I was so grateful for that image to come into my mind um, after reading this section. And I think that's why it was uh, so incredibly powerful for me. Yeah. yeah. Robin. Yeah. That, that's just wonderful. Uh, it's wonderful to hear you coming to that. And um, You muted yourself. Hang on. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Would you read that again? I was following you, but specifically what moved or gave you the insight to uh, or help affirm your thoughts that are coming forth about this big change? Yeah, well, I think it was because I have been um, seeing this choice as abandoning my mother. And that just fills me with so much guilt and shame and sadness. And I know that it's the right choice. And so instead of finding my voice and speaking what I know in my heart to be true, I've been making an enemy of myself from the guilt. So that's what it was. Carla. And it's it's so interesting how I do this to other what seems like other people because we pray this every time. It's in a prayer. Most my prayer most every time is that we're one with everyone. So how is it possible that we can love ourselves and not love someone else it's not possible it's the only way to really 
I mean, I don't know if that's a really good way to put it, the only way to live, but they, and I tell people all the time about the example when you're in a plane, they say one. And then, because only if you're alive or safe or, a, a, you know, a, to do it, can you help anybody else? And this is really one of the foundational things that Jennifer teaches. It's like, it's not giving yourself first because giving yourself is giving everybody else. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Carla. Yeah, Rand, go ahead. Well, of course, I come from the other end of the dynamic someone who does require some help and uh, some caregiving. And so I've been busy trying to ascertain what that's all about. And so I'm reading with a book group right now, The Untethered Soul, and uh, very helpful book. And uh, so the samsara, of course, that I deal with when you speak those words, of course, which has been a theme of my own life, which has been uh, a number of uh, abandonment issues from either caregivers or from spouses and buildings, like whatever not. So it seems to be my samsara to, to solve in this life. And so uh, that is my active work right now is to recognize the samsara and to let it go. And the illness it seems to be a vehicle for abandonment issues that I'm causing myself with the samsara. And uh, I don't know how much more there is to it than that, uh, but that's what I've learned from the untethered soul. So I'm exploring that. And, uh, you know, as my uh, spouse is riding off into the sunset right now, uh, I've had to uh, go back and look at the all the times this has happened to me in the past and what that's about. And it seems to be uh, related to uh, this issue that I'm carrying around from a long time ago, the uh, samsara. Hopefully you all understand what samsaras are. No, not really, but... Samsaras are, it's an Indian term, it's a Sanskrit term and samsaras in the untethered soul and, and other books, you know, Tibetan books or rather Buddhist books. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle of, of birth and re death and rebirth where you keep going over the same issues over and over again. And you're stuck in a cycle because you haven't processed what happened to you. You've, instead of processing it, you've stored it buried in your heart and so here's the opportunity to process that, come to terms with it, feel the emotions associated with it, and then let them go instead of hanging on to them. Now that's my interpretation. I'm sure you can get other interpretations, but that's some of what uh, Michael Singer brings out in the book. So I'll recommend you read that book. There's an awful lot of good I know a lot of you may have read the Surrender Experiment, but uh, this is another book I'd like you to look into if you are drawn to this work, if it's called to you. So, Linda, you may, may really benefit. I'm sure you read it, but you may have not. You might want to. Twice. Twice, <laughs> there you go. I've read it twice. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, and it, it helps me quite a bit. So uh, I just wanted to share that from the other side of the coin of that unhealthy dynamic of the sick and the caregiver and what that all means. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to share that. Yeah, thank you, Rand. And I know that um, we're basically working on the same thing. It's that feeling of abandonment, of either being abandoned or abandoning someone. And um, yeah. I know that we're both going to heal it this time around. So we don't have to come back and do it again. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. And we also know no one's truly abandoned. All relationships are eternal. Exactly. There's no such thing as abandonment. Yeah. It's just a feeling that we carry on as part of the martyrdom complex. Exactly. Yeah. Opposite sides of the same coin. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you for letting me share. Yeah. Thank you, Rand. Love you, buddy. I love you, too. Thank you, Linda. And happy belated birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm 60 60. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are. <laughs> amen. amen. <laughs> oh, All right, back to regular scheduled programming. <laughs> Does anybody else? Robin, go ahead. And then Deborah. Let Deborah go first. Okay, Deborah, go ahead. I just don't really have anything. I just would like another experience like I had last night, even though it kind of threw me off a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and I know you will. I, I, my experience has been that I get those little experiences and then they come more and more frequently to where I just have one and they're not exactly the same as the last experience, but it's similar. And I can uh, like be able to step back and be the observer of what is going on in my mind and in my surroundings. And um, yeah. Well, I've been thinking a lot this past week. Last week I went to the school district and cleared out the things that I needed from my personnel folder. And it was a kind of a mixed emotional experience of sadness and also kind of this feeling of, you know, I feel like I did that whole pattern for 40 straight years and just, you know, I never took the time to really evaluate it and decide if that's really what I wanted to be doing. I think many times it wasn't what I wanted to be doing. So it just made me start to reflect on what we do with time and how we get caught up in these patterns. And we just don't really stop to reevaluate things. And I know that you will continue being a teacher, even if it's not in a formal classroom. Well, I hope that's right, Linda, because I really love teaching. I, there were a lot of things about the classroom that, you know, didn't excite me, but um, the actual teaching part by itself is really did excite me. Yeah. Yeah, I know it to be true. Robin, go ahead. So, Deborah, uh, I'll just speak to your shifting uh, I was going to share immediately, but I always just wait. But to me, that shifting and that experience, in my experience, is um, where you have been willing to open up space, that you've held enough love and forgiveness, or whatever positive spiritual quality you've been practicing it. And now, that um, in, for me, those shifting experiences that are so deeply, I call them extraordinary moments, God moments, uh, that you are on your way, girl. And um, uh, you are now entering this beautiful, I guess, fifth dimension where we are being invited to work in the invisible, where we are, are invited to live our lives in that invisible spiritual realm and um so that's that's my experience and i love it when it happens and it is just um so it feels miraculous and it's so full of joy i usually get a feeling of real joy and being blessed and blissed out so <laughs> wow so, thank you very much for sharing that yeah so this part is real scary Take your time, Robin. You know, I 
don't want to go here. But your story, and then Rand, thank you so much because I guess you've opened my heart. As you speak of abandonment. And I have thought of coming to this particular group to share because there is um, uh, an enormous amount of feeling loved and supported. But I really um, am quite challenged in sharing. I have shared uh, many times. I'm really not wanting to share this story anymore. Um, but um, I'm in the, I'm in the, I don't know, I'm in the center of the eye of the hurricane or something. I don't know where I am. It's too long. It's a long, long story with lots of remarkable, exquisite God moments. And then I get locked off and um, I don't, I have a, a decision to make. And uh, I go, I'm in a process where I think I'm going forward and know what I'm doing. And then I get stuck. And um, so my story, and as I share my story, I'm wanting to do it to bring it to the light in this with you all. I, I don't want to bring you guys down and I don't want to, I don't want to be in it. I, I'm so it's hard to share uh, and not be in the drama, but I have, um, it's just time I need to come here. And we're all here with you. Well, I'm pretty much into my story. So, but crying is healing, right? So I um, have, let's see. Even to share this is just brings up, you know, my shame and I uh, found the daughter that I placed for adoption um, 54 years ago. And I wouldn't have been surprised at finding um, a woman who is in trouble or lived a, a troubled life. But the deep, uh, in, uh, I, I am terrified of the way I have found her. And I learned that her given name from her family or her parents is Anne Marie. And I don't know Anne Marie except that things have not turned out well for her. And that was my greatest fear. I 
I was in a home for unwed mothers and had her for two weeks. And I named her Jill. So I call her Jill Ann Marie because Jill is that two week old baby that I fell in love with. But not having the wherewithal to, to take care of her, placed her for adoption. And Anne Marie is this woman that um, resembles uh, my sister who was diagnosed with schizophrenia and bipolar at some other later date with psychotic uh, episodes, whether, whatever you want to call it. It was a hideous disease, bless her heart and mine. Uh, I, and I don't know that there's mental illness, but it appears. Um, or drug addiction and um, or something bad and um, my heart wants to reach out and my mind says stay away and I am caught in this limbo of um, I mean she is with me um, constantly and even when I press it down uh, it, it, she's always with me and I am tortured and tormented there doesn't see it and I know that in the moment that I hold her in love and light that I hold myself in love and light and that I just relax in the highest and best for both of us. In those moments, I am, I'm in, I'm, I'm in loving thoughts. Uh, I am trusting and having faith. But there's so many more thoughts that that come from the ego that I frighten myself and get stuck. So. I am grateful that I can just uh, bring this up. And um, I have worn out all my prayer partners, uh, a couple of little groups. I don't even, I've stopped even asking for prayers. Everyone has been loving and kind and open and so prayerful. And, um, you know, it's like dying. I feel like I have to take this step on my own and in, truth I know that I'm not alone but it it feels like a lonely journey even though I've had so much support and I get mad at myself you know at the worst end of it I get so upset because I not being the spiritual um Because I can't find the truth. So this is why I didn't want to share and why I don't want to share because I cut become completely and totally undone. And then I just left everyone kind of like, oh God. So uh, I can only, add, I can say thank you. I am grateful for the love and the sweetness that I know I find here and um, maybe just being able to share this with you all uh, will help me move forward. I've had so many incredible moving forward, I mean miraculous um, knowings and uh, I'm kind of in that place of unknowing. Um, and I've had to give up 
any thoughts of getting this done. And I try to trust and have faith that it is in God's timing, whether I reach out or not. And uh, I was at a place of really, by the time I decided to search for her, I pretty well felt like I was going to move forward. And then as I received the news, I received it. You all know that quiet and, and holy space, um, I received it with just this in this quiet way, but I can feel that I have been crushed and I've been unable to be strong and brave enough to, I don't even know what the right thing to do is. And um, I get all these, um, I mean, Anne Marie is, is just a very simple common name. I have never known a man, Anne Marie in all of my life with all the people I've met. I've not even heard the name. And now the name is all over the place. Uh, my last uh, prayer partner's name is Anna Marie. Uh, a neighbor moved in and her name is Jill. And so I, uh, Jill and Anna Marie and Aunt Anne Marie are, are just popping up all over the place. And um, in one in one area, um, it calls me to, to want to uh, make myself known, but then the um, feeling that I am not going to be able to step up to the truth of knowing how to be. I never was able to find out how to be uh, with my sister. Uh, and I mean, we both were doing the best we could, but it was a pretty Uh, it was a big challenge. Um, I'll just leave it there. And um, so I guess that's the end of my story. Thank you for listening. I'm so sorry. No need to be sorry, Robin. We're all here holding you. And I know. That, that, that the perfect answer will come to you. And in the meantime, your job is just to be as kind and gentle with yourself as possible and hold yourself and Jill in God's perfection, knowing that everything happened exactly as it was supposed to and everything going forward will happen exactly as it's supposed to, no matter what the decision is, whether it's for you to reach out to her or not. And in the meantime, you can just love her and send her prayers and pray for her and know that inside of her, just like inside of each and every one of us, is that Christ spark, no matter what the appearances look on the outside. Yes. Well said, Linda. Rabbi, you know how much we love you. I love you and I just, I can feel your pain. I wish I could, I could make it easier somehow, but I know I can't. Just wish you could see you through my eyes. Leslie is my prayer partner. We've been prayer partners for several years and she's the one I can text and say help. And she's always, so. It's my pleasure. Yeah. And Linda, I think it's um, very courageous of you. And I'm quite proud of you for, for taking care of yourself and, and even preparing to have that conversation. And I just pray that it's received in the love that you're giving it in. 
because I have a feeling it's not like you're going to be like, I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, it's going to be more of a compromise. I have a feeling, you know, <clears throat> for sure. And, and Rand, I just, you just impressed me so much how you don't seem to, and I don't know how you are truly, but I don't think that you hate your wife. And I just think it's incredible that you don't appear to have a lot of anger towards her for, as you said, riding off into the sunset. I don't even know her in that <laughs> and I don't even know in the situation. You know, I just I love you and you seem like such a wonderful person and and I pray that this abandonment issue does get healed for you in this lifetime because you're so done with it. You don't need it anymore. Nope. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. And uh no, it's true. I, I definitely have been working on it. We are here to love all. We've got to love everybody, regardless of the situation. And uh, that's what I'm working on, is just letting go of. Uh, well, she's your, she's your perfect teacher then, isn't she? Yeah, she is a good teacher. Perfect teacher. Yeah, continues to be. And uh, so, yeah, what, what more can we ask for? We're getting, we're working on those things that we came here to work on. Deep, dark stuff sometimes. I think it's so important. I think all of our situations would be just easy peasy if we just, if it was impossible for us to judge. If we couldn't yeah. judge anything or anyone or anything, if we just, if it was impossible for us to judge, we'd have no problems. <laughs> and that's Course in Miracles in a nutshell. Yeah. Maureen. Um. Well, I'm just going to bring Christ back in the center of this because I truly believe that is our biggest um, help. And I just found a space here. I think it's um, in my book, it's paragraph four in the, in the second reading. Um, it starts with creation gives no separate person and no separate thing the power to complete the Son of God. What idol can be called upon to give the Son of God what he already has? And this last sentence that I'm going to read now is the one that, that's a really key one. Completion is the function of God's Son. And when I read that, right away I saw Christ which along with the Holy Spirit, I mean, that, that combination, that combination for me is no matter how much work we do, no matter how much we try to do, we are trying to fix something which we created and it's just impossible. And so just to remember to humbly and gratefully turn it over to Christ with so much love and gratitude and just, and just knowing that in his time, in time, whatever time it is, all will be well again. And in the meantime, we have each other, we have angels, we have all the other helpers to just hold us along. But once we call that name and have the, whatever it is surrendered to the Christ, it's already done and to just pray for trust and faith in that. So that's my prayer for all of us. Thank you. I have an abandonment issues too. And I'm married with one who was actually abandoned by his mother when he was two, and we're still dealing with that. So yeah, there's a lot um, in that. And I feel I'm ready. You know, like Linda, you were talking about not being a victim anymore. That is part of my purpose and because of my son who died at 35 from a drug overdose i have decided that i'm going to help in the healing of the world for him because because he contributed to my healing so i see it as a yeah like he he passed on something to me for me to also pass on and it's not easy, but I, I know that um, 
with all of us doing it together. We are, we, we're doing it. So thank you, Robin, so much for trusting us in sharing with us because it just brings us even closer together and helps us to help you also with the healing. Thank you, Karin. Yeah, what came into my mind is that every single one of us here has been through or is going through experiences that crush us, like you said, Robin. And um, anytime I think that I am crushed or broken or falling apart, I'm reminded of the, the Japanese um, pottery kintsuki, where they take a, a clay pot, a beautiful clay pot, and they break it. And then they take those pieces, and you've probably heard me say this before, and they put it back together using liquid gold. And when that piece comes back together, it is stronger and more beautiful than it was before. And I know that is what has happened or is happening for each and every one of us. And I'm so grateful that we get to do it together because doing it alone is so challenging. You know, when we have the support from each other, why would we walk that path all by ourselves? Not necessary. I'm, I'm really grateful, Robin, that you shared that. Really grateful. Me too. Would anybody else like to share anything? I was wondering, we have somebody on the phone, the last four digits are 6589. I'm not sure who that is and, or if you're able to speak, but <clears throat> would you like to add to the conversation at all or just tell us who you are? I can unmute you. Here you are. Hello? Nope. <laughs> Let me see. I see you're unmuted, but uh, can't hear you. So I don't know. Sorry about that. I think it's star six to unmute. Oh, it looks like now you're muted. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. Well, I can tell a cute, fun, kind of cute, quick story. I know we only have a couple minutes. Okay. So last week, I was having a lovely day. I was in love. I was in peace. I was in gratitude. Everything was going great. It was raining out. Everything was perfect. And on, on my way home, I, I see a man, and it's not the best part of the na a neighborhood when I'm driving home. And he was on crutches, and he had like a cast on his leg. And it came to me to stop and ask him if he needed a ride somewhere or if he was okay. And I didn't listen. I just went on my way home and, and I still sent him love. I still prayed for him. It, it's not like I judged him in any way. I, I, I was still in love, but I didn't take any action. So I get home and, and things are still okay, you know. <laughs> and then I'm just in my closet taking off my tennis shoes because I have a big, a large walk-in closet. And my cat comes in, he looks at me. And he just pees on the bottom shelf for no reason. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, I guess it's a funny story in that it's just been funny what my ego has done with it. Like, why did he pee? I have four cat litters in my house because I have three cats. I clean it every single night. Why did he do this? Is it because I didn't help the homeless man? If I would have done this, would he have not, you know, and I'm just like, 
finally I'm like, you know what, Leslie, he just peed in the closet. That's it. <laughs> you don't have to make this big, huge drama about it. So that's my humor of the day. And he hasn't done it since. So I don't know what his deal was, but he just, he looked at me and just peed. It was the oddest thing in the world. So there you go. Don't figure out cats. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, Robin, go ahead. So, so just quickly, uh, I make a big deal out of everything, the smallest and the biggest. And there's that little gap that all you have to do is step over quietly. And it's not, it's just, yeah. So thank you for uh, that funny little story. And um, I just know that in a breath, uh, it, it thinks everything could be simplified, you know, but we make big deals and we go way out. And so you know I, what, what was funny about it too, and excuse me for interrupting was I just held the piece all day long. And then the second that cat peed in my closet, boom, I mean, I was so mad. I was so cursy. Uh, the F-bomb was flying. I mean, I was mad. And it's like, really, Leslie, the cat pees in your closet and you lose your piece. What are you going to do when something big comes around? You know, I was kind of ashamed of myself. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is not the tsunami. It's not a big deal. And you totally just gave your piece away. I just threw it away. And I had kept it all day. I was doing so good. And then I didn't help the homeless man. And then the cat peed. And then I lost my piece. And <sighs> my sense is that that cat peed in the closet because you were feeling guilty because you didn't help the homeless man I and, was. You, and you were shooting on yourself. So that cat peeing in your closet allowed you to throw those F bombs and scream so that you could just release that from your body, that Aww. whole energy. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> Thank you. Good. So he was doing you a favor yeah, by peeing himself, in the so closet. He must be onto something. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was feeling really, really guilty, you know, yeah. really put myself down. I was just, I was, I, again, I don't like to use that word ashamed, but I was feeling ashamed that why didn't I just stop and ask if he needed help? I was on my way home. It's not like, you know, so I guess I need to thank Sammy for doing that. He let yeah. my feelings out. <laughs> thank Good you time. for that. You're welcome. It's so interesting to get other perspectives from A Course in Miracles students, you know? Yeah. Very interesting. So thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have anything before we close out? Penelope. Um, can I just say thank you to everyone? Um, the, just the sharing today has just been just profound and so beautiful um, and, and the depth of it is just well it's just amazing um i've never had this experience before but it was interesting as each one of you began sharing and during your shares i'm actually having some huge energy shifts going through my body some some i can actually feel the energy shifting through my body um so wow that was it just amazing and i just bless every one of you and surround each one of you with love and light and just know that you deserve to heal this lifetime. Absolutely deserve to heal. So thank you. Thank you, Penelope. You know it's true. We're doing it together. Anybody else? Sue. Yay. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Well, I just um, was remembering a book that I read once. It was called Kitchen Table Wisdom. And I just feel like we're sitting at your kitchen table, Linda, and we're, <laughs> we're just sharing all the wisdom that we have and, and just absorbing all that you've got to offer. And I'm very grateful that I joined this group. Thank yeah. you. I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad you added your voice to the call. Thank you for that. And I love that. We're just sitting around my kitchen table shooting the shift. 
<laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Oh my gosh. I'm so grateful for all of you. What a blessing in my life. Thank you. And you bless us all. Yeah, thank you, Sue. All right. Thank you, Marjorie, for being here. And whoever's on the phone, I'm sorry we couldn't add your voice to the call today. But thank you for being here and adding your energy anyways. All right, so I'm going to close this out with um, my reading from Pathways of Light Insights from Workbook Lesson 169. By grace I live, by grace I am released. And how perfect is that? <laughs> this lesson reminds me to open my mind to the truth. It reminds me that I have more letting go or forgiveness to do. My mind needs to be purified by the Holy Spirit of all false ideas, all belief in separation. As my mind gets cleansed of the false ideas of limitation and lack, fear and guilt, a clean and open space is made in my mind. In this clean and open space, the Holy Spirit brings my mind to the truth. With the Holy Spirit's healing light, my mind is transformed. The goals I had before are seen as meaningless. The feelings of God's peace and gentleness motivates my willingness to let go of the dream of separation more and more each day. The world of form and bodies is believed a little less. I ask for God's grace, knowing that what I ask for, I will receive. I continue doing the work of forgiveness day by day. I continue handing over my perceptions to the Holy Spirit to receive a new perception. I continue taking every concern, every apprehension to the Holy Spirit's healing light, open to the peace of God, Opening to the peace of God becomes my one goal. I am willing to play the part of the Holy, that the Holy Spirit gives me in the undoing of the dream of separation. The Son of God is one. Every part of the Sonship must awaken for the Sonship to awaken fully. The way has been made. I focus on the present moment and do the mind healing work that presents itself in this moment. Through this daily work, I prepare an open mind to receive the holy instant. What stands out to me in this lesson is how important my part is in the plan for salvation of the world. If there is one aspect of the sonship that does not recognize it shares God's will completely, then there is still work to be done. I may think of that aspect as being in my own mind or perceive it as a brother in pain or fear. It does not matter because... We are all part of the sonship. The more I awaken to love, the more I realize I could no more leave a brother perceiving himself as lost and alone than I could leave my arm behind when I go off to work. And so as love grows stronger in my heart, the desire to share love with everyone grows stronger because that is what love does. To be truly helpful, my job is to forgive, to let go of all attachment to any form in this world. My job is to let go of any belief that separation is real. This letting go comes with willingness. As I am willing to look at each limiting belief and bring it to the Holy Spirit, I receive his clear vision. His vision shows me what is real and what is not. As I recognize the unreal, I freely lay it down. Thus, I prepare an open place in my mind to receive the gift of grace, the gift of unity and freedom from all limitation. With this release, I walk with a lighter step and a quiet smile on my face, and the love in my heart draws me to share my joy and gratitude with all my brothers. The light I receive, I am compelled to share not by obligation, but by heart's desire. Today I would again practice forgiveness that I might feel the release and live more fully in the light. When I read this lesson the first time, I did not feel I really understood it, all it had to say. So I took it an idea at a time. 
I think I understand that through forgiveness, I prepare my mind for grace. Grace is a gift from God that allows me to see a world without fear. Even as I live in a world of fear, grace allows me to recognize I am not separate, even as I seem to live a life based on separateness. Grace restores the memory of God. The problem is I can't imagine this. I can't think, oh, this is how it will feel. I cannot imagine how it will feel to be without fear of any kind or to never worry about having enough money or whatever form fear takes at any particular moment. I can imagine thinking I need money for something and being afraid I will not be able to get it and then realizing I want to forgive this thought of lack and fear. I can imagine giving this to Holy Spirit and allowing him to show me another way to see it. I can imagine doing this all day long, becoming aware of the need to forgive myself and others and giving it over. I can imagine as time goes on, I don't need to do this as often because I am slowly learning to live a forgiven life. I can even imagine someday I will need, not need to forgive anything that day. I don't see it happening today, but I am grateful for this process. Taking this one step at a time is something I can see myself succeeding at. I truly believe that as I continue to allow Holy Spirit to heal my mind, I go ever forward until someday I will reach a state that today I can't even imagine. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Oh, next week. <laughs> so we can cover beyond all idols and um, which is the next section and the truth, the truth behind illusions, which is the section after that. Um, since we didn't get to talk about beyond all idols much today. Um, yeah. So two sections is all. I think it's four pages. We can handle it. And if we don't get through it all, we don't get through it all. No big deal. All right. I love you guys. See you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.